Yes, ladies and gentlemen, episode 116 of the Sun and Moon anime titled Lily and the Mechanical Secret Princess just dropped, and we got more backstory about Moon's past, and Lily also got a Z-ring this episode. So, how did it go? Well, let's find out. It begins with Ash letting his Pokemon know that their food is ready, which leads them to rushing towards their food and spinning out. However, it seems Rowlet and Meltan aren't there to eat their food, so Ash goes to wake them up by letting them know that their food is ready. Rowlet gets up and is ready to go eat when Ash grabs him in midair. Ash asks where Meltan is and Rowlet responds by turning his head to the general direction of Meltan. It looks like it's in the kitchen ready to eat a pan, but before it can do that, Rowlet swoops it up. Ash tells it that it shouldn't do that, and they have food for it, and Rowlet drops it by its bowl, which has nuts and bolts for it to eat, which it starts eating happily. Kukui then comes up behind Ash and exposits how happy everyone looks when Ash tells him that the Meltan just went for the pan. This freaks out Kukui since Burnett will be upset, however, Ash reveals that the pan is safe. Ash then asks where Burnett is, and Kukui responds that she's at the Aether Paradise with Lusamine because Lusamine had a request for her. We then cut to Aether Paradise where Gladion and Lily are looking through all of Faba's paper in the basement section below. They're looking there because he told them that he has the papers from their father's experiment. He brought it down to their lab while Lusamine wanted to seal it off due to the shock of her seeing her husband die. However, before he can really complete that sentence, both Gladion and Lily tell him that he's still alive. As he's grabbing for a tissue, he grabs an old photograph that shows him, Lusamine, Moan, and Wick when they were all younger. He tells him that he was such a good leader and led their research team. We then cut to Lusamine who's also looking at a picture of them married and we get a flashback on the incident that took away Moan. It looked kind of similar, actually very similar, to the one that Lusamine had and it also involved Nihiligo. Burnett and Wick come in the room and they tell Lusamine that they've sent out an investigative party to try and find Moan out, but no results yet. But they encourage her by telling her that the search has just started. They ask her if she's found Moan's research paper and she says that Faba is helping her look for them along with the kids and we see a flashback when Gladion told his mother that his father slash her husband is still alive and he knows that because of what Hapu said about Tapu Fini's mist and the fact that they didn't meet him there. Lusamine says that she realized that she was wrong because she didn't realize how much the kids missed their father so she never told them anything about him. So she comes down to the basement and says she will take them somewhere while Burnett and Wick continue to search for the research paper. They fly to Mele Mele Island where Lily currently lives and James and the other assistants are there to greet him. They walk up to a bookshelf that's a secret passage to a basement and they go inside. Lusamine says that this was Moan's room and in a great bit of continuity, the incomplete flashback that Gladion had before about his father becomes clear to him thanks to him being in the room where that same memory occurred. Lusamine says how he was a passionate person and a researcher and she says that she's entrusting them with the room until he returns. They walk up to his desk where Lily opens a drawer and finds his Z-ring. James explains to them that Hala gave it to him when he came to Alola for his research. He was also apparently a gifted Pokemon trainer. Man, what is this guy not? They ask about his Pokemon and she says, it's no longer here. I assume she means she released it. James says that she was in shock at the time, so... I assume this has to be it. And later, we find out from Hala that it's a Zoroark, so I'm making this prediction now. Gladion is going to end up with that Zoroark. He has one in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, so with the story here in the anime, he's probably gonna get one here as well. Lusamine's very regretful about the whole situation when her kids tell her not to blame herself. It's a very nice scene, and she hugs them in return, which Lily still doesn't want to do since she's not a kid anymore. Gladion gives Lily a Z-ring and says that she should wear it until they find her father, and that she should ask Hala about it. Lily's excited about it, it and even tells Snowy that she might be getting a Z-ring. Just then, however, Lily notices the cabinet in the room, walks up to it, and opens it up and finds inside an inactive mythical Pokemon. Who's that Pokemon? It's Magierna! James tells her that it's a Pokemon called Magierna, and it's an artificial Pokemon created a long time ago. He met it in one of his travels. Lusamine then asks Lily what prompted her to open that cabinet, and Lily says that she isn't too sure. To which Lusamine tells her that Magierna was created to look after the princess of a castle a long time ago, which is why Moan got it, because Lily had just been born. How adorable. He tried to get it to work, but he never could, so he gave up on it. The next day, Lily's showing her friends her father's Z-ring. Kukui tells the rest of class that she's about to go see Hala about the ring, and she tells them that it's because she doesn't know if she's qualified, but she wants to use the ring, at least until they find her dad. So, the entire class decide to go with her to Hala's. We're in Hala's house when Hala's talking about how Moan won the Z-ring, and in yet another flashback, we see a young Hala. 
My goodness, he is rocking that 80s look. Just look at him. He's battling Moan, who has a Zoro arc, and we don't get to see the battle, unfortunately. Hala describes him as a calm yet passionate battler, which causes Kukui to say that he wants to battle him. So, according to everyone in this episode, Moan was a perfect father, a perfect husband, a perfect leader, and a perfect battler. Are we sure they're talking about Moan and not Jesus? Heck, they even say that if he's back, they'll host a feast for him. Watch out, Moan. One of your disciples might betray you. Lily's nervous to ask at first, but her friends all encourage her. She asks Hala if she can use the Z-Ring to be stronger and help find her father and learn how to use the ICMZ. He decides that he wants to see her use the Z-Move right now, so they go outside. She's ready to do the Z-Move, and she does the entire dance to do her Z-Move. I actually really like her speech while she's doing it, too but when she tries to attack, the Z power scatters and she isn't able to perform the move. Although her friends still encourage her and tell her that she can train and become stronger and eventually do it. Sophocles even says he's inspired by her using the Z move and he wants to use one too. What did I say about the last episode? He's gonna be getting a Z ring soon. And Snowy thinks that it's its fault and Lily has to comfort it. Oh, my heart. Hala then says that she almost had it and he was able to see her Z power, so he gives her special permission to use that Z ring temporarily until she can fully use that Z move. He tells her to visit him again once the time comes that she's mastered that move. Later on the night, she goes back to where Magierna is and tells it that she was able to get the Z-Ring and that she's going to work harder and become stronger as well as try to become friends with it. Its eyes light up and Vulpix notices it. It prods around and she finds a book behind it. It's basically Moan's diary and research on Magierna, which also includes a sketch of her as a baby being held by Magierna, which she gets emotional about. Lusamine and Gladion walk in and they congratulate her on getting the Z-Ring and wish her well in her training. Lusamine then notices the book and asks Lily what it is is, so apparently even she doesn't know about it. And Lily asks Lusumin if she can take care of Magierna and because she wants to try to get it working, even if she can't do it. Gladion comments how she's become strong. Later on in the room, she's reading the book and it contains the story of how Moan came across Magierna. It basically reiterates the story about how he bought Magierna because of the princess story and how that had reminded him of Lily. Moan planned to give Magierna to Lily as a present. And while reading this, Lily falls asleep with a smile on her face and that's the end of the episode. The after credit scene is Lily talking to her Vulpix about her Z-moves speech while James is happy but is internally saying, oh the speech isn't the problem. I said last episode that there was a lot of exposition, boy was I wrong. That being said, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Although I joked about him being compared to Jesus Christ, I really did like the way they told his story here. The first half was about his disappearance and how it happened, the second part was about how him outside of the Aether Foundation, how he was, the story of him as a trainer, and the third part was about the story of him as a father, and they gave him a lot of personality with these segments. The episode was also focused on Lily and her reactions to things. That's understandable, she's the main part of the cast. However, it does feel weird that Gladion was the one who spearheaded the whole thing, yet he's being pushed to the background. Then again, this is just the first episode, so I'm sure there's plenty more to come. I also like that Lily can't use her Z-move quite yet. It's a bit more realistic that way, since she isn't really an experienced trainer. People are gonna say, oh, Lana was able to hit her Z-move, but she was actively training for it, so it's understandable that she was able to do it. That being said, I know a lot of people are gonna be upset that yet another mythical slash legendary is being introduced and probably given to a character, and to be honest, I can kind of see why. They brought in three mythical Pokemons for this arc, and two of them have been in the show so far, having really done much, but this one seems to be getting a story focus, so maybe it'll get more love and actually do things once it comes to life. I'm also willing to see where this goes because our heroes seem to be gathering a lot of strong legendary type Pokemon, and I'm wondering what this is going to culminate with. For example, and this is a tiny spoiler for episode 120, but Mallow is going to meet a Kyogre in episode 120. Why? We don't know, but I mean, that really makes me think that there's something major that's going to happen, so I'm willing to see where this goes. Overall, I love this episode. A lot of backstory and exposition, but it was done really well, and it didn't feel too talking. Even though there's hardly any action, this episode felt important, and that's what's most important. The next episode preview shows our heroes visiting Mally City. I love Mally City. During this visit, Shaman, Vulpix, and Meltan end up getting lost while chasing after Mallow's hair ornament, so it looks like it's gonna be more a Pokemon-focused episode, and learn a little bit about Mally culture type episode. It doesn't look like too many important things will happen plot-wise, but it does look like a fun episode, so I'm excited. But anyways, that's it for my Pokemon Sun and Moon episode 116 review. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, like, share, subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter at TheRealPDGaming, and I will talk to you guys later. Peace.